HTML forms have to be configured appropriately to be able to handle uploading of files. So in this video, let's see how to set up an HTML form to handle file uploads correctly while using the ink type property of multi-part form data. And at the end of that, we'll take a few extra minutes to show some additional features that you can add by using JavaScript, like a preview of your video after the user has selected which video they wanna upload. All right, so I'm in VS Code and I have a basic Astro project started here. I'm using Astro for a live reloading server, but it doesn't really matter about the framework because we're just using HTML and JavaScript in this demo. So we'll need to start out with a basic form and our form will have a couple of different properties. Now, typically we're probably used to the action, which is the URL that we're gonna send the request to. We'll come back to that in a second. And then we might also be used to the fact that there is a method associated with a form as well. By default, this is set to get. We'll come back and update this to post in a minute, but I just wanna show you how this is gonna work if we did have this configured as a get request. Now inside of here, we'll have a label. This label is going to be for the video input and it would just say video. Now we are specifically talking about videos in this case, but what we're doing could be used for any type of file that you want to. We're just gonna customize this for video. From there, we're gonna have an input and instead of being a type of text, we're gonna have a type of file. This is going to signify that when the user clicks the button to choose, this is going to signify to the browser that when the user clicks this input, it's gonna open up the file dialog for them to choose a file. And the last thing we'll need is a button to actual, actually handle the submission of this file. So we'll call this submit. And then I'm gonna add a few different classes in here with Tailwind just to give some basic style. So I'll just paste those in. All right, so I pasted in a few basic styles with Tailwind. We can see what this looks like and let's just see if we submit now what is going to happen. So we can go in and choose a file and you can see that we see all these MP4s. Right now it also shows us all of the other types of files as well, which we wanna fix. So we'll come back to that in a minute. But let's select a file. Notice it kind of displays the name here. And then if we try to submit, what's going to happen? Well, we click the submit and notice that it changes the URL in here and it has an empty query param for a question mark, but no actual name associated with it. So for our input, we need to give this a name of video in this case. And then what's going to happen is when we choose this input now, when we choose our file and submit, this is going to be passed into the, into the URL as a query parameter associated with the name of video and then the value is going to be the name of the file. Now this is where the limitation of form submissions comes in with HTML is we don't want to submit this as a get request. We want to do this as a post request, but we also want to be able to submit the actual data for the file. And to do that, we have to use a property called ink type. And then we have to set this to multi-part form data. This is what allows us to submit files from a form. Now, we also need to submit this as a post request. And now we're gonna have a post request that is gonna submit this data to a server and also include the file itself. Now, we still don't have an action defined. So I'm gonna paste in an action that's gonna submit this to a local backend API that I have running so that we can actually see this work all the way through. So just really quickly, this is a bun project, which is pretty neat. I did a video talking about bun versus Node.js the other day. I'm gonna be doing more with this, but basically what this does is it uses a package called Malter to handle uploading this video. So Malter can upload this to a local directory inside of the project, or in this case, what I do is get a reference to that in memory, and then I upload this to Zeta, which I'll show you in a second. So let's go back and let's refresh this page and let's go and now choose a file and open this and then let's go ahead and submit. And you can see up here that this is loading and that's because it's sending it to the backend server, which takes time. And then the should, when it finishes, redirect us to a page that says video uploaded, nice. So this ran through all of the front end to upload that video to the back end, and then it uploaded that from there to Zeta. And we can see this inside of our table, under the video table, we have a new record that was created that also has a file attachment to it, which is for our video. Now this is one of the cool features of Zeta now is it has built in video or just file in general support. So you can upload files directly to your given records. I'll be working with this a lot upcoming in the next couple of months as I'm building a project in public to display all of this. So those are the basics of handling HTML file uploads with pure HTML. Let's just recap this really quickly. We have an action, which is the URL that we're gonna send this post request, the method, to. We also need to make sure that we annotate this with the ink type property being multi-part form data, which allows us to actually get the binary data for the file that we're looking to upload, and we can upload that to the server. 
We then have an input type of type file and we give it a name and that's how we can refer to that property on the server when we receive this. Now I mentioned there was one thing, one additional thing that we wanted to do to prevent users from choosing other types of files than video. So in this case, we specifically are looking to only allow users to upload video files. So we can add an accept property and the accept property is it a way to, for us to define what type of files the user can upload using this input. So in this case, we're gonna do video slash star. And this is basically going to imply we only want the user to be able to upload different types of video formats. So if we come back to our running application at port 4321, and we go to choose a file, we can see all of the MP4s are available. But if we go back to a directory, we don't have access to PDF or zip or MP3, et cetera. It's only allowing us to have access to MP4 files, which is exactly what we want. So we can add on that accept property, which then adds a little bit more constraint to what the user is able to actually upload. So if you're just looking to upload a file to an existing server using HTML, that's all you need. But what if you wanted to add some JavaScript to add some additional functionality to this process? The thing that comes to mind is after the user chooses a file, how do we then display the file that was chosen? Well, let's add some additional HTML and JavaScript and see how to do that. So underneath our form, I'm gonna add a video tag and the video tag has a source property which we're gonna update dynamically. Basically, after the user chooses the file, we're gonna update that source property so that it can display the actual file that was chosen. Now, in this case, I'm gonna add a few different classes on here. The most important is aspect of video, and this is a Tailwind class to give it a 16 by nine ratio, and then we'll set the width to full to take up the entire container. We'll also include the controls in here, so we want that to happen. And then we'll have a piece of text, your browser does not support the video tag. This is a basically a default. So if the video does not display correctly, it will show this. And that's only in case the browser does not support the video tag, which is not very likely. So if we save this now, we'll see that we now have kind of a preview or a placeholder for a video. Now we need to actually go and get a reference to that inside of JavaScript. Now, the cool thing about Astro is you can add script tags just like vanilla JavaScript right inside of your Astro component alongside of your HTML. Now from here, we're gonna to need to get a reference to a few of our different DOM elements so that we can work with them. So we have our video element, we have our file input, and we have our video form. Now let's add for our file input, let's add an event listener. And basically we wanna detect when the user has changed the input that's been chosen. So we'll add a change event and then we'll add a callback function that has the event inside of it. Now we wanna do a little bit of a check to make sure this uh, user has actually chosen a valid file. So we'll look at event.target.files. We'll make sure that exists and we'll make sure that event.target.files array has an initial property or it has an actual file set into that array. So if that is the case, then we want to set the video element, it will set its source property to the URL from, or the, the URL path to the object that the user, to the URL path to the file that the user chose. Now this is gonna come from the URL object and we'll call create object URL. And this will come from event.target.files and then the first file that was selected. In this case, we're only allowing one file to be selected. So it should be at the first index in the array. From there, we'll then tell the video to load or the video tag to load the video from the source that we just added. All right, we've got a little bit of some additional logic where it says that events.target could be null. So we could add in some checks in here to see if those exist. And then it's telling us that it may not have a property of files. In this case, we know this will because the type is of input file. Now, the last thing we wanna do is make sure that we have our file input, it has an ID, which I think we forgot. So on the file or the input up here, we need to add an ID of file input. And we'll also need to add the ID to the video player as well. So the video ID here will be video L. And notice that we're querying these elements down here below where we have video L file input. And then we'll talk about the video form in a second. So we can go ahead and add that ID as well. All right, so we'll save this. We should now be able to test this out. Let's come in and choose a file. And this will now show the preview of this file right inside of the video player so that we can show it there. Now, the last thing you might be interested in doing in JavaScript is handling the event submission in JavaScript instead of just having the HTML form handle it directly. 
you can then use this to show a loading state for while that video file is being submitted to the server as an example. So let's see what that would look like. We can take our video form and we can add an event listener and we can add a submit event listener and we can have our callback function. And this callback function will have the submission event. And in this case, the first thing we'll do is make sure to call event.prevent default. This will stop the actual HTML form from doing what it does by default. Now from here, we'll want to build a fetch request. We'll use the fetch API to send this request. And then inside of here, we want to some, we want to tell it which URL to send this to. Well, in this case, we can actually get the URL from the action property of this form because we've already defined it inside of this action. So we can grab it from the video form dot action. And the second parameter we'll send are our options. Now, in this case, we want to make sure this is a post method. So we're submitting this as a post, and then we're going to set our body to a new instance of form data. So we'll create the form data from the video form. And then that will be all the information that we need to submit to the server for this video submission. So let's just save this and see if that will work as well. Let's also add a log in here for submitting video, just to make sure we see this on the console to see that it's working inside of our front end JavaScript. So let's go into the console just so we have that up. Let's choose a nine by 16 video. Let's go ahead and submit this. It says submitting video. This network request should be loading behind the scenes. You see the pending there. And then when this is done, we should be able to see the response come back saying that that file has been uploaded. So if we look in the payload, we see the video has been sent as binary. And now that this is finished, we can see the response has come back as video uploaded. Now, the benefit of being able to handle this submission with JavaScript and the Fetch API is you could show like a dynamic loading state on here and you don't have to do a full page refresh, but that's up to you. You can either use just basic HTML or you can handle that submission inside of JavaScript and or add some JavaScript logic to be able to display a preview of the video after the user has selected it. So that is file submissions and HTML in five minutes and a little bit of JavaScript after. I mentioned in this demo that I was using Astro, which is one of my favorite frameworks. And I actually have a course on Astro at astrocourse.dev where you can learn to build static sites and server-side rendered sites and do everything to take advantage of one of what I think is one of the coolest JavaScript frameworks available right now. So if you're interested in that, you can check it out at astrocourse.dev. In the meantime, I'll be doing a lot more content on video uploads as I'm building in public using Zeta and then a product called Century as well. So if you have any ideas for other things you'd like to see relevant to handling video uploads, let me know in the comments below. Make sure to check out for more videos coming in the future and I'll catch you next time.